Anybody remember the name of that Old Testament character, Enoch? Yes. Raise your hand if you do. You can raise your hand online too. Um, well, e Enoch was what was called a pre-flood patriarch. So it was after the creation, before the flood, if you follow the storyline of Genesis. And Enoch was a righteous man. He was a righteous man and he lived to 350 years. Now those patriarchs, back then the story goes, lived about 700 years. I'm thinking I'm gonna to go to 130, but I don't know about 350. <laughs> Not quite there yet. I guess I'm not a patriarch. Um, but in that setting that Enoch was in, after the creation, before uh, the flood, everything was based on physicality. You know, the world was made and animals were made and birds were made and it was all very, very physical. And of course, the threat of the flood uh, took that physicality and brought it to the end for much of the life on earth at that point. But Enoch, this guy in this world, a very physical world, it is said he walked with God. Well, we might translate that a little differently. He fleshed out his spirit life. He found the Christ within. Um, anyway, he walked with God as the story goes. But the story goes like this, he walked with God and then he was no more. Walked with God and he was no more. Translated as though it was in that understanding into a heaven someplace else. I like the story about Enoch because it stresses both the physicality that we have, our physical nature, and our spiritual nature, the spiritual nature, and, and they're seamless. They go, you just, he lived and he walked with God. It was one uh, pure stream of life. In the New Testament, it refers to Enoch. Remember, there's a chapter that's all about faith. Uh, in Hebrews 11. And this is what it says about Enoch, this little known character. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death. And he has was not found because God had taken him. Again, that just stream of life continuing just in a different way. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, in the world and of the world as we develop this idea. I put together a key spiritual truth, as I usually do, and here it is. We work with our physical nature and our spiritual nature to experience our connection with the divine and with ourselves. I wanna say that again. We work with our physical nature and our spiritual nature to experience our connection with the divine and with ourselves. Of course, we're gonna talk about that physical nature and that spiritual nature and both of them, how they work together. But let's start with the physical nature. I like to think we are a citizen of the world. We dwell here, we are, this is, this is where we are, this is, this is where we're comfortable. This is where we live, as we know it in that physical sense. And except for our very early years, maybe before the age of seven, four, three, four, five, six, we still had some sense of the spiritual nature that we had. And we showed that in different ways. And then um, that all changed. We seem to have forgotten something about that time in life. And we became more oriented toward the physical world and our physical existence. That was what, what became predominant and dominant in our lives. 
It showed itself in a couple different ways. Um, going back to the creation, in the creation, man, this creature that was kind of at the top of the pyramid, was given dominion. Here's what Genesis says. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, and over all the earth. Notice the physicality that's there. It is a physical existence as seen in that story. Dominion, funny term, but it doesn't mean exactly what I'm going to stand here and direct this to happen or that to happen. It means that you have stewardship of that. The Native American tradition expresses it a little bit differently because they don't think of themselves particularly uh, having dominion over the earth, but belonging to the earth. I like this little quote from Chief Seattle. The earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth.